This is part three on threading with a die, and be sure and watch the first two parts. Uh, this one is going to deal with threading with a die on the lathe. Now some of these operations are going to be under power, and some are strictly by hand. And I'm going to use some of these uh, attachments that I have here and uh, there are probably many other available. Remember that these dies aren't really designed for uh, uh, threading under power, but uh, we just push them to their limits sometimes. Uh, any dies that are manufactured uh, strictly for uh, production threading on uh, high-speed machinery, they're die heads that have separate chasers and they use constant flows of uh, cutting oil and, uh, and I do not have one of those and I'm not gonna talk about them in this series. There's already a thread cut on this uh, piece of uh, stock, and I'm going to just simulate this one with uh, it's half 13, and here's the die. And uh, many times you're, you're thinking, why are you doing this on a lathe? Many times you've already turned the stock to a diameter, and you'd like to thread it right while you get it on the lathe. And uh, if you by this method, it assures a perfectly straight thread. That is, you cannot get the die on crooked. Now, uh, you can use either just your quill, or I put a chuck in there and I back the jaws all the way back, and there's a nice flat surface here, and you can press that flat surface up against the uh, back side of the die stock. Actually, it'll be this side. And uh, that serves two purposes. It holds it perfectly square, and you can exert pressure with the tailstock. I just locked the tailstock to get it started. The and it would just go in a manner like this. And I'm feeding the tailstock in, and uh, once it's started, then you don't you don't have to worry about uh, the tailstock. You can back that off and continue to thread in this manner. Now I did lock the uh, spindle here, so it's in back gears, so the spindle will not rotate. And then you can go all the way up to your shoulder, and then back it off. And that's a good method that I use all the time. Now here's another very similar method. And uh, this is a, something that I made up many years ago. Here's a number three taper. And this has just been turned to a, a diameter. I don't know what the dam diameter is, but put that in there. And uh, we got a half 13 die in here. And this can slide back and forth on here and draw itself in, but you can use the tailstock to uh, uh, initially uh, get some pressure against it to get it started. I'm locking the tailstock. Again, we're just simulating this one. And we're bringing it up, and we'll put a little pressure from the tailstock. And then you put a rod in there. In this case, I'm just using the chuck key. And you can thread in this manner. That is going to assure a perfectly uh, straight thread. You can make one of these up in a size that would hold a one inch die. This is holding the uh, uh, one and a half inch dies. And this can advance as it, the thread progresses. And this can even be backed off and taken out of the way if necessary. So that's a real handy one. But I believe you'll have to make that up yourself. I don't think they're available commercially. Now we will be threading under power. This is a closing 12 inch lathe and it has a tapered uh, keyed spindle so the chuck cannot come off even when we reverse it. We reverse it. The, uh, <clears throat> I've got it set uh, slow speed and back gears and I've got a quarter 28 die in this uh, die holder here and I'm going to turn the machine on and just push the tail stock in until it advances. Do not lock the tail stock and I lubricated the way so it can pull itself in. Now the second I thread as far as I want to I will uh, either turn the machine off or in this case I have a clutch and then I will reverse the machine and back out under power. Here we go. We're threading away. I'm going to stop it at this point. I'm going to reverse the machine. Now, if you're threading larger size and this turns on you, you can put a bar in here to uh, keep that from spinning in the chuck or in the tailstock quill. Reverse and back out. And I'm putting a little pressure on the tailstock to pull. You see how that pulled out of the tailstock. This is a fine thread. 
Now you say uh, we're not backing the thread off to break the chip off. I know we're not doing it, uh, and I may be breaking some rules by doing this, but uh, I don't care. Now you can do this exactly the opposite too. Now we have a short piece of quarter inch stock held in the Jacobs chuck and we put the die holder in the lathe chuck and we can thread that one. And I'll put about a half inch of thread on there. Put the clutch off, reverse the machine. there we put a nice quarter inch fine thread on. Now I've got 3 16 brass in the tailstock chuck and in this little holder here that has a hex on the end and uh, holds a one inch die I have a 1024 die and um, start from this side and I'm going to put that in the three jaw and I'm going to use some of this uh, mystic metal mover on this brass, see how that works. I'm pushing in to get it started. I'm using that rather liberally. Stop. You may have a line, layout line you're going to uh, thread up to, but I'm just pull the die out, tail stock out a little bit by hand. put about three quarters of a thread, 1024 thread on brass. Now you're thinking uh, why don't you just put the dies directly in the chuck and you can if it's a hex that'll work quite nicely. Uh, the round ones and the smaller sizes will uh, probably grip tight enough but remember this is hardened steel and it, uh, the chuck jaws do not grip very well on it. When you get into the inch and a halfers you can use one of these holders that is hex shaped and uh, would uh, prevent it from turning. There are many other ways of doing this depending on your uh, imagination. I hope some of this uh, information on dies and threading on both uh, by hand and on the machine are helpful to you. Uh, be sure and watch the other two parts of this and uh, watch for my other videos. I'll be making a lot more of them this winter. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.